My LFS saved my Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. Before we get started with today's video, I want to do a quick channel announcement. I'm now on Instagram, so if you'd like to follow along, just search for Reefer Gill on Instagram. I'll be posting real-time photos and videos as the progression goes along. As you guys know, I broke down my five-year-old 75-gallon reef system and I put all the livestock in these Home Depot makeshift aquariums that consisted of basically a plastic tub. Within the tub, all I did is put a circulation pump and a heater inside of it. We're on day three of those fish being in those tubs, so I'm starting to get pretty concerned. I'm nowhere near starting the next build, so I approached my local fish store ultimate aquariums explained my situation to them and they agreed to take in my livestock and sell it on consignment basis now the only thing i'm not going to sell are my two clownfish because obviously i'm not going to part for uh, part with them they're coming back into the new system but i also wanted to say a big thank you to Brendan and joe the owners of ultimate aquarium for allowing this to happen it relieved a whole bunch of stress not only because i was stressed out about the livestock in these two tubs, but also stressing out over rushing this next build. Now with this, I am able to take my time and actually focus on the details that I envisioned my next build to look like. So I'll be able to take my time with this next build, which is absolutely awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up the tub. I put everything in one tub and uh, removed a lot of the water, put it in the back of the truck, take it over to the fish store and while we're there we'll take a look around and talk to the staff so let's get going Alright guys, so I'm here with Ian from Ultimate Aquariums in San Mateo, California. He's a senior staff member here at Ultimate Aquariums and probably one of the most knowledgeable people that I know when it comes to the knowledge about corals and expertise on coral species. Aside from maybe Than from Tidal Gardens, I don't think I know anybody else who knows corals the same way that Ian here knows them. So we're going to talk to Ian. He's been an employee here for the past six years and he's been in the hobby for the last 20. So we'll go ahead and ask him a couple of questions and see what he has to say. Thank you for uh, being no here problem. for the interview. No problem. Um, Ian, why don't you first start off with, besides the freshwater, saltwater fish that you guys sell, 
and the dry goods, what other services does Ultimate Aquariums offer? Well, um, at the Ultimate Aquarium, we, besides uh, fish sales and dry goods sales, we also do um, aquarium maintenance for fresh and salt water. Um, we also do free basic water testing, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, uh, salinity. Um, we do um, custom setups. We also do custom tanks and custom stands. And um, we're also a great resource to you know, discuss potential issues, future endeavors, ideas, you know, talking about potentially getting your first tank, fresh or salt. So I feel like we're a great local resource to show a nice way to get a tank going off successfully. Awesome. And going back to your expertise when it comes to the corals, what is it that you do in your spare time that gains you that knowledge that you have? So in the past five years, I have been, no, well, maybe a little longer. I've always been fascinated with SPS as much as I had Actually, mostly LPS corals, but also some softies. But my end goal was always SPS. Um, I always would look at, you know, kind of the emergence of captive farm fragments, almost like in the mariculture stuff. And I was just, it looks almost like a crystal. It has all this color, but it's an animal. So it just, to me, it looks so strange. Um, so I just would learn and read, even though not having any of that. And so finally, you know, getting into it, um, I would start with culture pieces and then just basically get my grip of it. And so basically the last, well obviously more intense as time goes on, but all the, I just get really into it. So if I need to, you know, work on testing what, my alkalinity calcium and magnesium, I'll go do it if I need to. What resources do you look at when you want to learn more about corals? I look at as much scientific information as possible in some opinion based stuff. Um, I know it's a hard, hard task, especially since uh, corals can hybridize and the flow and lighting conditions project certain things. I think it's interesting to attempt to try to identify corals based off their iconic morphology and you know other color characteristics. Um, I go on the Australian Institute of Marine Sciences website and look at specific Acropora specimens and compare it to things I think they might be immediately similar to or something that might be different at the same time. So I just try to get a general understanding of like what I could buy and what I like and then kind of think of it in a more scientific perspective in terms of, you know, type of specific coral or the geographic region and then try to, you know, remember that to have as kind of fun facts for each coral in the future. Awesome. Right, what would you say are your three top favorite corals? Really like Ore Pearlberry, the right combination of vintage classic, beautiful colors, super unique, and nothing else like it. I really like the Walt Disney Tenius. Um, it's just an amazing, amazing coral that I never knew could even exist. Um, it just it's amazing besides the price. Um, I also really, really love a lot of these uh, trendy, pretty sure they're Montipore, my butcher at Palwal Nensis, these really very lumpy, encrusting Montes, like the Beach Bum, um, and a couple others in that direction, like Kung Pao. Um, they're just so unique, so colorful, and those are another thing that has color and structure, in my opinion. Great. It's just so, so okay. cool. Okay, just so the viewers on YouTube understand, I did give him the questions prior to the interview. However, I didn't get an answer. I just gave him the questions. So, this is not staged, but I'm going to ask this question. When you saw the corals that I was bringing in, uh, you had a quite excited of a reaction to one particular coral. Uh, can you go ahead and tell the viewers what you saw? Yes, yeah, so I am a... Personally, an over-organized reefer in the sense that I like name specimens. I like, I don't like random stuff by any means, not to be biased, but I, I like name things. And I would think, I've, I've been very much in that direction. I was looking at all the corals. The first thing, besides that one coral, is the method that you were using 
produce such natural-esque, full throw, super dense skeletons. And you're talking about Fawn and Maroon Ballin, right? Yes. Okay. All of that, and it clearly shows that that's an excellent product with all the proper components and trace elements to build the true dense heart aragonite. But going back to his question, um, he had a huge, well, it turned out to be, but assumingly it looked like a big or a pearlberry. It had the colors, it had the shape, the end fringe had this huge blue ram, followed by the right vibrancy of the kind of a grass green and the emerging white, maybe very, very light mint color polyps on. And I looked at it and looked at it and I looked at it and I asked uh, Reefer Gill if it was Pearl Bear and he goes, what's that? And so I looked at it some more and I looked at it some more and I just, I couldn't stop looking at it because it's not impossible to find on the market, but it's not available commonly by any, any means. So it's kind of elusively around. So the fact that somebody could have so much so well grown, so well colored, and not know that they basically had this hidden gem was kind of a, just a really amazingly surprising experience because um, I, I just didn't expect that. I knew he had awesome corals. I knew he had a ton of corals. I just never seen that one from him before. And then to see it in a perfect condition basically was just wowsome. Great. So, so Ian's going to take a piece of that coral, obviously, for his personal tank, as well as have it here at the store. Uh, once I get my tank up and running, I'll get a piece of that frag back and try to grow it out. Uh, but I want to really uh, thank you for this interview. Oh, no problem. And, uh, Anytime. You know, you are a wealth of information. If you guys live locally in the Silicon Valley, I really encourage you guys to stop by and check out Ultimate Aquariums. I'll flash a business card on the screen now and just come by, check out the store, make some purchases, talk to the staff, and you'll see what I'm talking about once you arrive. Before we leave the store, let's go ahead and take a final look at the livestock that I left behind. For the exception of the clownfish, everything else will be sold off. My clownfish are being temporarily housed in this very large frag tank. Both are keeping an eye on each other and appear to be happy and enjoying their new surroundings way better than the plastic bin they were in earlier. The Chromis in the background must be the village greeter or something because he's keeping a close eye on both. As far as for the rest of the livestock, they'll be getting sold off. In the meantime, everyone is looking great in their new holding facilities. A quick look at the Flame Angel. I've had the Flame Angel for three years and he's always been a great model citizen in my tank. My elusive gumdrop goby is doing great. My molinaris is in this ras tank and is the largest ras in the tank. And a final look at the scopus tank and dotty back both enjoying each other's company in the same tank here. So that will do it for this video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Also hit that subscription button if you haven't already done so and the bell right next to it to be notified when future videos are released to follow along with the next build. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button and we'll see you guys next Sunday.